Hello, Vinyl community. My name is Richard. Welcome back to my channel. Um, welcome for the first time, if you're here for the first time. So back relatively soon, uh, responding to Rob Walker's uh, 2022 vinyl tag. Now you can uh, give Rob the dubious honor, perhaps, of uh, um, kind of prompting me to get into the vinyl community. Um, I think it, it was a contest response from about a year ago. Um, was my very first video so thank you Robin thank you for setting up the uh, up, up this tag uh, I've left a uh, link to Rob Walker's uh, channel uh, let the music play in uh, in my description here so I will I try to work hard to compress the timeline for this video so hopefully I can make it reasonably swift um, and not for everyone so I, again, I will follow the 22 questions that uh, Rob laid out. Um, and I will start with a favorite album purchased in 2021. Kind of a tie situation here, late breaking tie. I will start with an album I've shown before. Again, I'm working to build my vinyl collection. I have not been into it for that long. So apologies if you see something pop up again here, but uh, this is Pastoralia by Yusha. Uh, from uh, May of 2021. Great Norwegian uh, progressive rock, kind of folk-minded, uh, uh, uh as John Bellamy have ex helped uh, e educate us all on in his great videos as of late, and, uh, uh, or, or Forest Prague, if you will, in English. Highly recommend. Uh, next, there's supposed to be a new album coming out in 22 from, from the band. Uh, kind of a second first place here is by also a Norwegian called Stian Karstensen. Uh, now he's uh, uh, maybe to many in Norway known as an accordion player. This is really a jazz, avant-garde jazz, um, maybe somewhat fusion-minded album. Uh, he's composed, he plays a lot of the instruments, uh, not just the accordion but also so just a whole sort of kind of prog instruments, if you will, and including pedal steel guitar, uh, bagpipes. Uh, this is folk inspired, and, and folk here really is more uh, the uh, uh, Balkan area uh, folk music. Um, gotten a lot of praise in Norway, including from Prague circles. I uh, highly recommend this musical sanatorium by Stian Karstensen on the uh, Grappa Records label. Then, um, album of first person you saw live. Well, I'm probably skipping some more relatively obscure things uh, that happened in the early 80s that I don't really feel like revisiting. So the first major concert I went to was by Pink Floyd. Now I went to see the Division Bell tour in Oslo in 1994. This is a copy of the latest re-release of their um, Momentary Lapse of Reason album. Um, I think with some redone, uh, or a little polished up uh, photography, comes both on the jacket and, and the inside of the album. Um, and if you didn't know, all these beds on the beach here, these are not, this is not a Photoshop type job. Now this is a you know, mid to late eighties album. So Photoshopping would be probably, uh, I don't know, close to non-existent at the time, but all these beds actually were put out on the beach and uh, to, to shoot photos for the jacket. Um, great experience, certainly to be on that Pink Floyd concert. The album by a duo. I actually struggled with this one. I could go back to Yusha, then those are two, really two, two people in, in the group, but finding something different. This is a Finnish jazz record uh, live album that I uh, recently got on a sale. I think I paid maybe $13 for this album, um, released by Swart Records. Um, jazz uh, album, so this is uh, the Penti, Hietanen and Teppo Hauta Aho duo and the Wazama Quartet, I think one band on side A and the other band on side B from 
1976 rider, um, recorded at the, uh, uh, I have to look at my cheat sheet here, I think it's the uh, Lee San Katu Studios in Helsinki. Um, you can see kind of a nod to that here. It's a, a jazz Lisa. Um, I have not had a lot of time with this album yet, but um, well worth the $13 and then some. I uh, look forward to learning more about it. A concept album. I'm oh, sorry, an album in the shrink. Uh, my albums don't tend to stay in the shrink too long before I put them in new outer and inner sleeves, but I just got this in. This is by a rock, rock band, Embryo. The album is Auf Auf. It's a re-release of their first album um, that just dropped, I think, late in the year, last year. Look forward to getting into this. And it will get in some new sleeves once I get my, get resupplied by Final Storage Solutions in Manitoba, a bit to the north of me. Uh, next album is, um, our next ice is to show a concept album. Well, I just showed this, but I'll show it again uh, briefly. Animals, Pink Floyd from 1977, viewed as a commentary on the social and political conditions in Great Britain uh, in the mid 70s. Um, some will also draw parallels between this and um, George Orwell's uh, uh, book, uh, Animal Farm. Uh, and if you know, Animal Farm is rather pig oriented and um, you know there's three of the tracks on, on the Animal album uh, also has pigs involved in it. Let's see, the next one, an album I have not played yet. Well, along with the Embryo album that came in this week in the same package was also Magma, uh, live in London uh, at the BBC in 1974. Um, and sounds from the West Coast, Pete there and John at Baggy Hi-Fi, uh, kind of nudged me along in, in, in maybe direct and, or in direct ways that I need to get some more Magma uh, in, in my collection. Um, it's supposed to be, uh, I think it was a record days release in Europe um, sometime last year, and I don't think it was released in, in the US, uh, but uh, must have made its way over here. Uh, anyways, look forward to giving that a listen. A, uh, let's see, an artist I discovered in 2021. Uh, uh, something new, and uh, also a new category for me. Maybe not something I would usually buy from a category perspective, but um, the band here is the Delvin Lamar Organ Trio, uh, live at KEXP is the album. I believe KEXP is a Seattle radio station. A great jazz funk album, uh, but a very rocky guitar. Uh, and um, so the trio is percussions, guitar, and then Delvin Lamar, I uh, believe on the organ. Uh, really great feel-good mu music with some drive to it. Uh, they are releasing another album at the end of uh, February on Coal Mine Records, that's C-O-L-E, Mine Records. Uh, really fun album to, to, to crank up. Uh, um, uh, live album, well, I just showed the live album, but another live album. Um, I've shown this before, but I think I've shown all my other live albums before. So this is uh, Can or Khan, a uh, German band, uh, live in Stuttgart, 1975. And they just released also a uh, uh, very similar looking uh, album, with slightly different colors, but I think the same image, uh, live in bright, from, uh, I forget now, it was 75 or 76. Triple album, great sound quality, highly recommended. And then, um, mixed, oops, sorry, my cheat sheets here are not cooperating with me. A album from a different continent. Well, I'm from the European continent, I live on the North American continent, so 
So I'm going to kind of use North American continent as a reference. I'm going to go to uh, for, for where I'm at and um, go to the UK here and uh, show Black Midi uh, with their album Cavalcade from last year. Um, great uh, prog-minded album. A uh, lot of uh, nods, I think, to uh, Ken Crimson. I feel there's some Captain Beefheart in here too. Um, highly recommend it. Maybe not the album for everybody if you're not into uh, a little something that may be a little bit more experimental. But also there's this album has a lot of different components to it. Highly recommend you don't just listen to one track and guess what the rest of the album is like. Um, you may get it wrong. So Black Me Cavalcade. Next one here then is an album uh, with a price sticker on the jacket, and I strike out here. Uh, even for my used albums, I, I don't, I could not think of an album with a price sticker um, on it. Um, again, they tend to come off pretty quick when I get them home. Um, and this is maybe the more embarrassing part to fail on. Maybe I'll use the excuse that my collection, my vinyl collection is still young, but a punk or new wave album. I, I don't have one to show. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to say uh, punk is not my, not, not something that is uh, a big thing to me personally for, for what I have heard so far. That doesn't mean that I, I, I hate it. It's maybe just not quite at the stage where I'm seeking it out. Um, new Wave, there are probably a few things that I believe would fall under that category that may end up in my collection in the future. Um, just throw out there, and I, I don't know that it's the most loved David Bowie album, but Scary Monsters. Um, and of course, Scary Monsters have Robert Fripp playing guitar on it. So um, if you're a Fripp completionist, I suppose, too, uh, something one, someone may, might want in their collection. The, then the next one is a box set, and there I do have something to show. Um, this is the Arabs in Aspic box set from last year. Uh, their first three uh, albums uh, on a remastered re-release. Uh, the name of the albums are here. They are Progeria, Far Out in Arabia, Strange Frame of Mind. This is on the Norwegian Charisma label. Um, very briefly, we will show you kind of get a booklet. I'll, some of their cover art, I don't know, it's it's pretty mild mannered, I, I think, but uh, I don't know if there's going to be some YouTube algorithm issues uh, if I go too far with it. But they uh, kind of get the treatment with some album art, photos, and writing about the band. Uh, all the albums on uh, colored vinyl, our search three. And you also get a slip mat. And I believe the upcoming Wobbler uh, box set, which also is a re-release of their first three albums, will be given, given the same treatment, if you will. Um, so Arabs and Aspic is a somewhat on the harder side, progressive uh, rock band from Norway. Um, Next one is album with a sporting theme. I got only one. This is Kraftwerk with their album Tour de France and some electronic music from I think 2003. The album was released uh, originally started I believe in the early to mid 80s, uh, and then I guess it took a while to complete. And I, there was some other music released in between there. Double album. Um, I think the only thing that maybe I will get some pleadings in the house to please turn on the volume uh, if I play that one. Um, I, I don't think it's something that should be that bad compared to some of the other music that I have that is, uh, I think, a lot more intense, uh, perhaps. But anyway, it's a jazz album. Uh, just fairly recently got a hold of this on, on the vinyl in 
uh, pretty good condition. This is Tahiri Dal. Uh, the album is Waves from 1977 on the ECM label. Tahiri is a uh, Norwegian guitar player, composer. Um, have a rather extensive catalog dating back to the mid 60s. Play with uh, many well known uh, names. Um, in the jazz world, um, I think also much loved in the progressive rock world, fusion. Um, probably one, one of my favorite ones of his. Then, let's see, the next one is um, the best of album. Well, I don't have a vinyl album uh, that's as the best of. But I will show a CD cover for this one. In part because I, I've always thought it was a kind of interesting choice in title. So this is a Pink Floyd kind of best of CD that I bought uh, many moons ago. The uh, name of the name of the kind of well, effectively a best of album, I suppose, is a collection of great dance songs. I am no dancer. Nobody will claim that I am a dancer, um, but I still think it's fair to say that this may not be what you would normally. Um, think of as dance song. So on here you will find one of these days, money, uh, sheep, shine on your crazy diamond, wish you were here, another brick in a wall part two. Um, for those of you that are into Pink Floyd, I, I think you might agree that uh, maybe it's not what springs to mind if you feel like dancing. But um, Then show an album with at least eight people on the jacket. This is Frank Zappa, orchestral favorites. You'll see quite a few people on both the front and the back. And if you open up the gatefold, you will see the whole orchestra. Let's see if I get a mole in here. So quite a few people. Uh, I'm not sure how many were on here, but uh, I, I should I guess here you can see you can see the list of names mm -hmm. that were part of the orchestra. Then the next one, show a soundtrack. Um, not very lighthearted music. This is um, Mike Oldfield and the soundtrack from The Killing Fields, uh, an album about uh, the uh, a couple of journalists um, that are in Cambodia during the Khmer Rouge era. Um, so, rather serious topic. Uh, I have, uh, particularly my youth, spent a lot of time listening to this more perhaps avant-garde, classical winded album in many ways. Um, I think $8, brand new, uh, but still somehow needs a really thorough deep cleaning because it's probably the most crackly record I have. Um, but anyways, I kind of a no-brainer, not everyday music to me, but uh, it has its has its place. Um, I'll show something more lighthearted as well. Pink Panther um, by Henry Manzini. Well, uh, soundtrack as opposed to the cartoons, at least uh, uh, you have, of course, the most uh, famous bit of the Pink Panther theme. Um, my younger son and I, um, uh, we like to, to watch the old Pink Panther cartoons, and so he's picked up on the tune there. So I thought it was would be fun to have a, have some something in my record collection that my son might appreciate too, and perhaps make him interested if he feels so inclined in the future to grab a record. I showed some VCLT. Well, I'm not really been exchanging VCLT, uh, so I'll show a Christmas gift here. Um, this is John Coltrane, um, Love Supreme, live in Seattle on the Impulse label that uh, my wife and son gave me for Christmas. 
And um, then the next one is an album with no writing on the jacket. Well, I don't know, I have no writing on any signs, but oh, oh this was really glary. Um, I will show um, airborne, uh, airborne, <laughs> um, airbag, Norwegian progressive rock, neo prog band, their album Identity. This is from a recent re release. You see, there's a little writing on the back side here, not on the front side. Um, some of the older airbag stuff was has been pre-released in the last few years on the Charisma label. Um, and their uh, headman, Bjorn Ries, is uh, coming out with a solo album now uh, in, I believe, April 8th. Let's see, uh, then seven inch single. Well, I only have one seven inch anything. I've not been collecting any of that. This is by an Austin, Texas progressive rock band called Proud Peasants. Uh, the uh, title here is Cosmic Sounds. And on this particular one, they have a, a tune called Side A is Daybreak, which is an Eloy cover. And uh, Side B is Saturn. Lord of the Ring, Mercury, The Winged Messenger, Manfred Mann, uh, to, 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 and this has also been signed by the front man of, of Proud Peasants, uh, or Proud Peasant, um, Xander uh, Rapstein, I believe is how he says his name. Um, they are working on a, a new album, all with their own music, coming out perhaps in 2022. Um, and they just also released an album last year, which is some of their own music, some covers um, on, on, on CD. You can find Proud Peasant on uh, Bandcamp. And of course, some great proggy art on this one. Let's see, then uh, colored vinyl album. Um, well, I could pick pick many here, and I, now I sit here and realize that as I um, as I was going to show something that it's not in the stack I grabbed. So um, maybe just because I don't know that I will have time for more, <laughs> many more reshoots, I will quickly jump back to the first uh, album I showed, this is Yusha, and very, really nice deep blue color, colored vinyl. Uh, oh, a lot of colored vinyl albums. I don't tend to pay a lot of extra for them, but um, they're about the same price as what I tend to pick. An album from 1982. <laughs> uh, well, I don't have anything on vinyl. So, uh, I'll have to, I'll have to uh, try and show something though. So, um, here's something from my CD collection. This is Mike Oldfield's Five Miles Out album. Um, from 1982. And um, Five Miles Out and Family Man is probably two of the more um, uh, well-known tunes from this album that also gained some uh, familiarity, perhaps beyond just the uh, more historical uh, Michael Phil bass at the time. So, uh, and some may remember Maggie Riley, which also had a solo, solo career which have the vocals uh, on this album. Um, and I also found this one, Phil Collins. And uh, hello, I must be going. Uh, so um, a little bit of patch up with CDs, uh, had to do it. 
maybe 2023 vinyl tag I'll have some more to pick from but uh, still catching up a lot too so thanks for watching everybody um, staying with me if you reach it this far we'll uh, see you later stay well